Okay, good morning, Austin. We are here day one of the running event. This is gonna be our daily show from TRE in Austin, Texas. Howdy, my name is Dylan Bowman with Free Trail. Our first guest, Mr. Ted Knutson, the owner of San Francisco Running Company. Ted, good morning to you. Good morning, thanks for having me. Glad you could come in. Before we get to you and your story, Ted, just a big thank you to Boa, who is our presenting sponsor of the show here over the next couple of days. Boa, of course, the great technology and lacing system, the dials you see on every pair of Speedland shoes. They work with La Sportiva and Scarpa and Ultra and a lot of great other footwear products in addition to being big in the snowboard boot business, cycling shoes, now ski boots, really cool. So big thanks to Boa for their support of the program. Over the next couple of days, Ted, I'm so glad you could come in, buddy. So first and, and foremost, you were just saying this is your your third TRE. You're the only retailer that we're talking to, I think, over the next couple of days. So maybe just start about like what makes TRE special? Why is it important for a shop like yours to have a, a presence here and interact with the brands? Well, it's the, uh, I was told three years ago, like, you need to go because that's the only time you're going to meet all the, you know, big vendors and for run specialty. It's uh, one time you get to meet all the other store owners and get to know them uh, as well. So it's a fun, you know, three day trip. The only thing that stresses me out is I'm also involved with the Western States lottery. So I got to like hustle back Thursday night <laughs> to get to Auburn. Uh, Me too. Yeah, so <laughs> we're on the same schedule on that one. Say more about, you know, interfacing with the other independent specialty retailers, because obviously there's some competition among the group, but also there's a camaraderie and there's a, probably a feeling of, you know, kindred spiritness. Between yeah, I'd say owners. we're all little islands yeah. out there and we're just like happy to talk to someone about our same woes that we have. And, you know, everybody has either one door, you know, you talk about doors, so many shops you have. Yeah, it's the code name, and uh, you know if you have two, that's kind of a big deal, and you know seven or eight, then you got the fleet feats. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game, and we're all jealous of their like buying power and stuff like that. So that's uh, it's just more like camaraderie, and then learning a few little tidbits that everybody what makes them successful. Hopefully, you can learn from everybody. So. Yeah. And then the goal is basically you'll be walking around looking at a lot of new product, thinking about how might this product fit with our shop and with our clientele? Is that sort of the goal of the next couple of days? Some of it is that, and some of it is you get to meet like the Hoka booth, you know, you get to meet all the higher ups. Yeah. And then, you know, San Francisco Running Company does have a good brand name out there. Thanks to, you know, Brett started this thing and uh, Brett Rivers. And, you know, it's got a world, it's been 10 plus years and it's got a really well-respected name. I mean, yeah. we're not the highest volume store or anything like that, but people love the brand. Yeah. So when you show up, it's like you're, they recognize you and it's kind of fun. I mean, it's good to be kind of recognized as that and, and meet uh, the higher up in the chains, like the regional managers, which you'll never meet unless you're at the show. Yeah. Like, unless they have some very specific need to come see you. Very cool. So you just mentioned Brett, Brett Rivers and Larissa Rivers, the co-founders and previous owners of the shop. We'll come back and talk about them here in a sec. You purchased the store from the Rivers family in 2019. July 2019, yep. Before we get to to that, tell the people what you did before you got into the retail game and why you decided to take that hard <laughs> left turn in your career. So a uh, software engineer for, I guess, since 98, 97, something like that. Yeah. Uh, before that, I... Actually, actually, after college, climbed for six months, living out of a van on $200 a week. So that's my, my most proud accomplishment was budgeting back then. Uh, but was at several startups and then landed at the right one that my college buddy had started. And uh, we sold that in 2018. So why did I buy the store in 2019? Mostly because I could. <laughs> <laughs> but to be brutally honest, um, it's, I mean, I helped Brett, like he borrowed my truck to get that treadmill in that he had there. You know, like yep. I think I bought the very first pair of shoes from him before he even had a cash register. So I was kind of in on the store early, but um, my parents had had a retail store forever. So I knew sort of what I was getting into, but not really. But I would not recommend buying a store pre-pandemic. <laughs> that is uh, like a 
that's very tough. That's where I was going to go next. So July of 2019, and then immediately you go straight into the teeth of COVID-19. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that that's uh, <laughs> devastating for a lot of retail businesses around the country and around the world, which yeah. means that you were forged in fire, so to speak. And I know you've sort of emerged through the backside here in one piece, but it wasn't easy. Tell the people about that. Any lessons yeah, learned? Um, so there's like, there's multiple facets there. You know, when you have a lease, you have to understand really the implications money wise of that. I was like ready to in April, like just liquidate and leave. But like, then you got this lease thing you got to worry about. So you can't really do that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of stores had just a couple of months left on their lease. Then you can do that kind of stuff. But if you have years, it's just not financially worth it. Um, you be, have to become operationally, as efficient as possible. The good thing about the pandemic was I looked at every expense and cut out anything that didn't make any sense or was too expensive or something like that. Uh, those were the operational things. And then uh, everybody who paid taxes and, you know, we all got the, uh, the relief fund from the government mm -hmm. on the small business relief stuff. Thank you for paying that because that's what's made and then later on, this um, employee retention ERP yep. stuff, if, if most people have maybe or may not have heard of it, another huge, uh, very intense days of Excel spreadsheets to figure out how much you can get. Yeah. But worth every penny of the hours I spent doing that, and that totally helped pay for payroll during the lean times. So I came down to, like, if we make this much money a week, that, like – keeps the lights on. And then this much money a week, uh, you know, per week allows us to pay the bills to the vendors. And all the vendors were super minus like a few, like we'll extend terms out another six months and we know everybody's hurting and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it, you just kind of had to be flexible and think long-term. Did your experience in software and tech and startups help during that moment or was it, Truly a totally new experience. Um, I am good at optimizing yeah. stuff and knowing the least amount of work to get the most done kind of like problems you solve all the time. So I can, I can work operationally. But there must have been weeks, if not months or years where you were like, what the hell have I gotten myself into oh, yeah. here? Every, I mean, nearly every day. Uh, I'll tell one quick funny story was like, you know, I would sell out of the stores. I would open, it was just me. And I would open the doors from like 10 to 12 at Mill Valley and like two to four at San Anselmo, but just for people who did online ordering. And at some point you're like, do I put the whole store online or not? And you're like, those kind of decisions, you're like, I, I it's not worth the time to, because I'm not going to compete with Amazon. Yeah, right. So either you're just going to provide a little bit of service for the community and hope it comes back, or you're just going to, not worry about it. And I just started like, I'm not going to worry about that because wow. it's, I, there's no differentiator at that point. Yep. yep. I, you know, I might as well just be Amazon too. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Well, congratulations for getting through it. And Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, yeah, like I said, it was an immensely stressful oh, period yeah, of just your life and your career, but um, yeah, great way to learn the, the retail business, I'm sure. So SFRC has been hugely important to, to me and, and my family over time. And I think it's, you have two shops, the one in Mill Valley, the one in San Antonio you just mentioned. And I think uniquely probably among your cohort of shop owners, trail running like probably drives a lot of the oh. business. So when you go talk to run specialty yeah. and people are like, so what's your, it's always about the, what's your mix, how much road, how much trail and these, you know, like, uh, the train, uh, the chain that's in Georgia, um, uh, the peach, whatever, I can forget their name now, but like, Oh yeah, we we're lucky if we do 5% trail. I'm like, what we do 50% trail. And everyone looks at me like you do what? Wow. And it's like, that's our kind of gift for Marin is we have the trails right there and we can sell half of our shoes are literally trail shoes. Not that everybody's yeah. running in them. There are a lot of hikers. San Anselmo mostly sells people come first words out of mouth. I don't run anymore. I just hike, but I need a trail shoe. And you're like, <laughs> perfect. Here you go. And they walk out happy and we'll see them 
you know, three or six months later for the next pair. Yeah. And you've been trail running since way before it was cool. Maybe say a few words about yeah. the advancement of product over that period of time and, and what you see coming down the pipeline from the shop. I was actually thinking about this. Uh, so 1995 was my first ultra. It was the, the now defunct, but rebranded headlands 50 K, but it was called the point raise 50 K and that was pre point raise being a national park. So that's right. why I was eligible Tamalpa still did all the work there. So that I just did one a year. That was the one I'd really, I think it was running Nike Pegasus probably at that point. Um, and so then my first, uh, quad was in 97 and it was Nike ACG gear. Quad Dipsy. We yeah. should specify. Uh, and those were, I think some of the best shoes, if I remember right, it was like a super muddy year. They worked perfectly. Yeah. And, That's when uh, Nike was sponsoring and Trayson. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but then after that, I turned into Brooks, which, you know, because Scott Jerk ran in Brooks. So everybody ran in Cascadia. Cascadia. And then they changed the last. And I, right before my 2009 Western States, I had a brand new pair ready to go. And I just, they hurt my feet at the last big training run. So I went with a worn out training pair, finished that race fine. Yeah. And then I went to Montreal and then Hoka since 2010 so, yeah. or 2011. I mean, my foot has formed into a Hoka shape, even though I'm not wearing <laughs> it right now. So. It's so cool. And yeah, the product has advanced so much in well, my time in the sport. And I'd say like from dedicated bottles, like yeah. that's my direction used to be. That's all you could get was a bottle to everybody runs in a vest now. Yep. And you can tell the old school people. Uh, you see an old, they got an old bottle. You know, ultimate like, direction handheld bottle. That's how you know you're an OG, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, we'll come back and talk about the quad here at the end of our conversation. Before we get to it, I want to talk about community because I think it's really important for shops like yours to cultivate that. And I think it was something that you inherited, but something that you've been able to build upon is the community element of the San Francisco running company. Talk about what makes that SFRC community special and in what ways it contributes to the health and longevity over time for the shop itself. So what I'll say to make it special, I think the community is part of that. It's the trail community extension, which is that you've never, like if you're in a trail race and someone falls over, you'll stop and help them. In a road marathon, you're going to step on them because they're going to like slowing you down. Kind of thing. <laughs> so, I think it's just an extension of the trail community because it started with the Ninja Loop with, you know, back when everybody joined on Thursday morning and did that 12 mile loop. And it was just like, it's just part of the, the sense there and the headlands helps that. And so we do have the big group run every Saturday morning at the shop. It's on this, we have an open Strava group that always announces that. And it's just these, you know, um, We've now put in two distances to accommodate people who don't want to go 12 to 14 miles and yeah. just getting into it kind of thing. So we've tried to be as open and inclusive as possible. And then I think one of my smarter moves was um, when Trail Sisters was, was in its infancy, we had a couple of the Marin chapter founders mm -hmm. always showing up on the Saturday run. I'm like, hey, how about you guys help us organize the first Saturday of every month and you guys design the route and you guys run it. And uh, that has worked out. Their their uh, group has grown tenfold over wow. the last 10 year, two so years, two years. So it's a Trail Sisters specific Saturday morning group. And run. they do three distances and they have a no drop early start. So if someone's really uh, concerned about not being able to do the run, like there's going to be someone with you every step of the way. And I'm like, that right there is the, yeah. the meaning of, you know, community, like, sure, I'll help you out. Mm -hmm. I'm an experienced person. I'll be your guide today. And, and so that's really, really helped out. So, so great. So many friendships and marriages and now children, I think are a result of oh, SFRC. It, I love uh, my favorite thing. I actually pay someone now to do the run. Cause I, yeah. it's like, I need to have a Saturday morning, but, um, when I was starting the Saturday morning ones, if I saw someone who was an original, especially a Ninja Loop original, I would always point them out so and, and embarrass them in front of the whole crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it's required. But now I've had people who were shop employees as a high schooler who now have real jobs 
and they're coming back to do the run. You're like, that's the full circle. Heck yes. They've gone to college and they've come back. And like, As okay, if working at SFRC isn't a real job that I'm going to be asking you for a job <laughs> here pretty soon. Um, so as I said, you've been trail running since before it was cool. On Saturday, you finished your 25th quad dip seat. For those who are unfamiliar, just explain what the quad is and what significance it's held in your life over that quarter century. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so the quad dipsy was started in 1983 by, uh, tropical John Medinger and a bunch of crazies. And so it's always held on the Saturday after Thanksgiving, uh, used to start eight now it starts seven 30 in the morning and it's from Mill Valley to Stinson, back to Mill Valley, back to Stinson and back to Mill Valley. Uh, I, it's like a giant chess match to me because each lap is, has a different character depending on your fitness and how tired you are during the day. And, um, that fourth lap is always what I call the lap of truth. Uh, if you've had a great day, you may have a great fourth lap or you're going to have the worst seven miles of your life. Uh, and you know, it goes on the famous dipsy stairs and the dipsy race itself. The single dipsy has been around for a hundred plus years. So it's, uh, you know, ingrained in the culture of Marin as far as that's always in June. So, um, so I started in 1997, and I don't re actually remember how I found out about the race, probably on Stan's site, you know, the run hundreds. And I did the first one, and when I finished, I saw this guy get this 10-year jacket. And I was like, okay, I got to do that. I got to get this 10-year <laughs> jacket. So then 10 years passed, and uh, then I was like, well, I just got to keep going here. Yeah. And so um, Jeff Vaughn and Greg Nako have – 26 and 28 finishes respectively. And then there's two original, I don't know their names, runners who each have 25. So yeah. um, technically the fifth. And then next year, Katra Corbett, if she comes back, she will get her 25th. And uh, so we used to be on the same number and then she missed last yeah. year. So we were like twins for the day. But it seems like 26 is not on the horizon for you. We're going to be breaking a little bit of news <laughs> here. Free trail exclusive. Tell the people what the future holds for the quad dipsy. And yeah, Mr. so this 25th was my retirement run. And then I'm taking over the race director role starting next year. Uh, I was part helping John Cass a little bit this year. But next year I'm officially the, the race director. So I'll give back to the race. Uh, it was mentally very good to, I mean, I had an injury most of the summer. So I was kind of worried about finishing, but I finished fine. Uh, but mentally it was very satisfying to run that fourth lap this year, knowing yeah. that, um, that was it. I don't the, like the final lap of truth. Yes. <laughs> what a beautiful thing. Good. Well, from software to retail now race directing, I'm still you in software. I'll yeah. Tell you I was going to say, so side gig. yeah. Re remind people what you do on the software side too, especially as we lead into the lottery coming up on Saturday. Oh, well that too. Yeah. I have like, I got a lot of stuff going on. Um, <laughs> I am probably too far embedded into the Western States organization. But anyway, uh, if you signed up for the port, uh, the lottery through the portal, that's the software I wrote. Um, 10 years ago, the board, decided overnight, like, we're going to do the lottery this way. And Craig, um, it was minted brand new race director. And he, we had, uh, talked about certain things and I was like, okay, let's, let's do this. And so that's how it all started 10 years ago was like getting involved in the lottery that much was, uh, it's kind of like we had two weeks to get it done. It's so funny, dude, because like, I'm sure a ton of the people who are watching, listen to this are in the Western States lottery. And they don't 9, know. 9,500 plus of you. <laughs> they interacted with your software to get into that lottery. Plus Ultra Live, I mean, on race day, you're texting me right and left with, with updates that are coming through that, that platform too. So. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been uh, involved with states since 2000. So I ran my first one in 2006, but 2007 volunteering, and then I've run a couple more times there. So. Yeah. But I don't think I can, not that I can't physically do it, it's just like, involvement now is, is too much. So. Yeah. Well, Ted, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for carving out the time. Maybe in closing, um, you know, talk about what you have coming up over the next couple of days. Cause not only are you going to be here checking out new product and stuff, but I know you're going to be on a panel too. So what's going yeah, on, on uh, Thursday morning at 10 on the Strava groups panel. Cause we have a 
big group run every Saturday morning with, yeah. its, with the store, and that's our main communication. We have 11,000 plus members on that, so that's uh, everybody asks, like, how do you do this? It's like, well, we got a lot of people yeah, well. who like the run, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's good. And then tomorrow's a fun day at TRA because you get to just see all the vendors and yeah. hook and check, you know, connect with people who are like you're – you always talk to on the phone or email and do your orders with. And yeah. Stuff like that, so. and uh, so I'll just be hanging around there. And, and where should we point our listeners and viewers? SF Run Co. on Instagram is where you can probably find most of the information you need. Yeah. Yeah. Our uh, social media game is not that great at the moment, but you know, we're trying to improve all the time. So, <laughs> so are we. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ted, uh, yeah, again, congrats on 25 finishes. Thank Thanks for what you do for the Marin trail running community and for, specialty retailers around the country. Thanks. We'll see you on the showroom floor. Okay, thanks. thanks.